still can't attack the whole thing at once, cyber-wise or otherwise, but that's a way to um, still create an impact. Again, terrorists don't always have to cause mass casualties. They, they basically, the word terrorist means creating fear. So um, they may only have to say that they've done it and have it occur in a couple places. Um, United Water is the second biggest with seven million and Aquarians in the eastern, U eastern US uh, is in three states. So that's the exception to the fragmentation, but again, um, that makes it likely that the only mass attack could be through cyber if you can do it. Um, but there are water system inter interdependencies um, that bring them together as well. Um, and the biggest one is treatment chemicals. I won't read all the boxes around here, but the biggest one is treatment chemicals, and you can see that um, chlorine gas is used by most systems. And flip side of the fragmentation of the water industry, the water infrastructure, is the concentration of chlorine production. 38% of it's in Louisiana. Um, and, and in, and in a, a short list of other states. So, and, and if we looked at the rail lines, if I did a detailed study of this and looked at the rail lines in Louisiana and some of those plants, you could find some nodes where some, some kinetic attacks could, could slow down the system or do it or DOS it. Uh, we know that Al-Qaeda has considered directly attacking U.S. rail lines. Um, other reasons to attack rail lines, but this, this could be one reason as well. Now, I presented this at the American Water Works Association National Security Conference last year, and it was a much smaller crowd than this for some reason. Um, and I was in a, I was in a group, uh, I was talking on, on a day after the IT talks about the, so, some of the things about SCADA that I'll be talking about later, and I was in a group of folks talking about chlorine. And I don't know if anybody in the, in the audience got it, uh, that, uh, hey, uh, even this isn't the easiest thing to do, it may be impractical, but it's, it's there. And, and somebody needs to be thinking about it. And I haven't found any evidence that anyone in, in, in charge has been, been looking at this problem. Because um, it's not, so, so you've got the concentration of the, of the production facilities, meaning you could DOS the system, you could shut them all down for, you know, if you attack the plants or the rail lines. Uh, that might only work for a short period of time uh, because some plants stockpile, my, my little plant stockpile for a month. Bigger plants, though, get shipments every day, bigger water plants. So that's, that's something that should be thought of. Um, but the strangest thought I had, which uh, I can't get anybody to confirm that, that they're thinking about it, is chlorine's already a, a poison, okay? It's used to kill bacteria and to disinfect the water. My thought was, gee, why couldn't you, could you poison the chlorine? Because when the water comes into the plant, no one tests the chlorine. It's in these cylinders, and you put it in a special room so no one can breathe it and it won't kill people in the building. But you're not, you're, not, you're not sampling it for anything. And actually, there is a substance that I'll withhold that could be used. It's bulky. It's expensive. Um, there, it does exist in the US. It is a chemical that's, that, that is known to be uh, uh, held by Iran and North Korea because it's used to make other weapons of mass destruction. Um, so hopefully it's a far-fetched idea. But I brought it up at the first Water Security Congress right after 9-11 when their panel of experts and their chemists and whatever, and I'm not a chemist, I, I asked them that. I said, tell me, is this crazy? And they went, they didn't say it was crazy. So, I, so I'm worried. But, it, <laughs> but, but, I, but I think what they say in Mythbusters is it's, it, it may be plausible but impractical. But again, somebody should be thinking about, you know, looking into that. Uh, so types of attacks in general, if you're going after individual systems, are uh, broken down into chemical, biological, physical disruption, and disruptions of SCADA. Uh, honestly, the, the good old-fashioned sabotage might work best, but again, if, you, if you're attacking water systems in the U.S., how many are you going to attack? You know, you, you, that needs a large manpower base to do kinetic attacks and do bombings and stuff. And Al-Qaeda didn't say they were going to shut down the water, they said they're going to poison it. And that's much harder to do. But these are the options. Um, but if you can have chemical, biological, or radiological contamination, it's got to meet four criteria. Uh, it's got to be weaponized. So the, 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 it's got to be soluble in the water or not soluble in the water, depending on what it is. Um, it's it's got to be infectious or toxic from drinking water. It's got to be stable, meaning it doesn't, um, isn't consumed by, by being transported in the water. And it's got to be chlorine resistant. Now, I'll go through the components of the water system later. Obviously, it's going to be chlorine resistant if it goes in before, if it goes like in the reservoir and goes into the plant. 
but it's still going to be chlorine resistant if it goes in later because there's always going to be chlorine in the water. To, there's going to be some chlorine residual in the water when it gets to your house or at the end of the system to make sure that you don't have bacterial growth in the pipes. So there's a short list of CBR that are, that are plausible. And again, I'm not going to go into those details as much as uh, other experts on that subject might. Uh, but it also could be a combination attack. So for example, uh, uh, some of you may have heard in the news uh, that in May there was a boil water order in the, in the Boston area. And uh, what, what happened was that they, there was a single point of failure in the, in the 26 inch, what, it was a gigantic water pipe from the Quabbin Reservoir into the Boston system. Uh, and it just broke. And water was spewing hundred, you know, hundreds of feet in the air uh, until they were able to stop it. And that was the water uh, that was um, treated water uh, going into the, uh, it's a whole, Mass Water Resources Authority is a, is, a, is a wholesaler and they distribute it to 68 towns in the Boston area. Um, so they couldn't get treated water to people, but they still had to get water out to the system to keep the, to, for fire suppression and also to, to run sewer systems. So they still ran the water and then they did public campaigns that tell people, boil the water, don't drink the water, do this, do this, here's where we'll get boil, bottled water and so on. So what if uh, an adversary did the same thing and blew up a pipe and then disrupted the communications? Then people wouldn't know, or not as many people would know, that they, they had to boil the water. So again, there's a lot of scenarios like that where you don't necessarily have to poison the water uh, to cause a problem. If it's not chlorinated and it's not treated, it, it's going to cause problems. Okay, so here are the public water system components. And I, I used, a, there's a lot of different um, diagrams I could get, and this one attempts to show some of the, some of the instrumentation and the SCADA components. Um, in security, we've got CIA, confidentiality, confidentiality integrity, availability. Um, they've got PSA, you have to have sufficient pressure of the water, it's gotta be safe to drink, and it's gotta be available. Now the pressure, I won't talk about much more, but the pressure comes from the pumps at the treatment plant that push the water out at a certain pressure. And it's got to be the same as at the top of the water, of the water column in the water tanks. Um, so pressure can come from either way. Um, and of course you lose pressure if you have a break in a pipe, which happens, it's a routine thing. Safe to drink, of course, is the quality of the water in the reservoir or the well, um, and then after it is treated, but also uh, how it how it is affected by the pipes. Um, the, the condition of the pipes uh, isn't something you usually think of for, for safe to drink, but it is. And I'll, it's not a big topic for this talk, but it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a gigantic topic for uh, making sure that the water coming out of the tap is, is safe to drink and actually good to drink, and you want to drink it, and it's not cloudy and, and uh, it's clear. And available on demand, of course, is, is, is the key thing. It doesn't do any good to do the rest if you can't get it to the people's taps. So source of water supply. Uh, after 9-11, uh, people were scrambling uh, before, you know, at water plants anyway, water systems, before we got any direction. Um, and I remember the MWRA, the Mass Water Resources Authority, Water, Resor water Resources Authority, uh, the biggest one in Massachusetts, uh, spent millions of dollars with the armed guards and building, building fences and so on around the Quabbin Reservoir and around uh, reservoirs. Um, and we had the similar thoughts in my town, uh, and that's my reservoir there. Um, actually, that's the pond. There's another reservoir uh, that we share with the state. And we were concerned with, um, you know, immediate, what do we do now? And so we, we tried to, I tried to block vehicular access as much as we could to the reservoir, but you can't in many cases because they're big. Um, then as, as we got more details and, and things filtered down from the EPA and the State Environmental Agency, uh, it became clear that it, it's not impossible to poison a large water supply, but it's, again, very impractical. Um, and the example I got uh, in my research is the Dillon Reservoir. Someone did a calculation uh, what it would take to contaminate it, and um, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of contaminant. So someone would have to dump, you know, you'd have to have tanker trucks backing into the place. Again, not impossible, but again, if you're, if you're an adversary, is that, is that you're going to want to do that in 10 or 100 places? Unlikely, but so so it's good to be vigilant about it. But again, it's it, we're not really worried that this will be the first place someone would attack. Now, on the other hand, uh, I've done a lot of work in protecting water supplies for clean water action in the state and in my town. 
And there's a lot of examples of uh, well, well fields getting out of commission because they're contaminated from leaking underground storage tanks, petroleum, et cetera. Also nitrates if uh, septic systems are too close together. Uh, Superfund sites, there's a water supply. I worked with a citizens group in Wilmington, Mass., um, that uh, to deal with a Superfund site that knocked out half the town's water supply in we that were wells. So it's, it's not unusual at all for a well field to be knocked out of commission. That's usually if it's what's called a confined aquifer. So it's an underground pond, basically, with clay on the boundaries, say, or rock, or something relatively impermeable. So something spills in it, it stays in it, and the concentrations go up, and you can't drink it anymore. Uh, that's not that uncommon. So, so well fields are most vulnerable. Again, but it's the same problem with dilution. So you know, you've got a Superfund site in Wilmington, for example, for decades was dumping God knows what, TCE, PCE, uh, all sorts of you know, industrial chemicals into the ground, and over decades, it, 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 it killed the water supply. So again, that's difficult for an adversary to do on purpose. Now instrumentation, it, there's a wide variety of, um, of instrumentation, well, maybe not that wide, but um, depending upon the source. In a, in a, in a surface water supply, a, a pond, lake, or reservoir, uh, you often have stream flow controls where you try to keep track of the stream flow um, going in and out of the pond uh, to control the uh, water balance. Uh, you, you, uh, you might, you, in some cases, you have a real-time control uh, monitoring of water quality, although that's, that's fairly rare. And in many cases, those would feed into the SCADA system. So you'd have a, a route potentially for data or an attack from these uh, instrumentation systems into the SCADA system. But the biggest sort of impact would be, say, a dam, obviously. If you had a dam that was radio controlled or SCADA controlled or um, some other remote control uh, for it, um, you can think that if you, could, if you could open the floodgates in a dam uh, or close it so it would spill over or uh, combine that with a, a kin kinetic attack, um, that's, a, that's an area for, for causing serious damage. Okay, the water treatment plant, that's where the heart of the SCADA system is, um, and I won't go through the entire treatment process, um, but it's, um, you know, you have, to, you have to intake the water, you coagulate it to take out the bigger pieces of solid matter, flocculation further takes out the solid matter, uh, chemical addition, you have to control the pH and some other, some other parameters, uh, filtration um, takes out, um, you know, everything else, and chlorination is used uh, for the most part for disinfection, but also in New England anyway, uh, to oxidize iron and manganese, uh, which is a common contaminant in New England. Um, and then it goes to the clear well, something called the clear well, which it could be inside the plant, could be under the plant, could be a tank outside the plant. And that's probably the most vulnerable part of the plant because it's after all the processes. Um, and this is where the heart of the SCADA system is. And again, I'm used to a, a small system with one plant. Um, you can be a moderate size system and have four or five treatment plants and maybe have one SCADA system that you know, works for all of them. Um, now usually they're in a building and the building is alarmed, uh, it's got fences, uh, et cetera. But here's a picture of a plant in uh, Florida uh, that I took a few years ago. That's, um, out, those, are all the, those are the tanks, that's the processing facility. Um, you know, it's not, not really that well protected. However, it's on an island that that's, that's, has a gate, and it's very hard to get to. But again, it's, they don't have much weather there, I guess, so it's, it's uh, relatively exposed. Um, so again, what could you do with a plant if you were attacking it? Uh, a kinetic attack, I think, would boil down to this uh, plain old sabotage. You'd blow something up and stop, stop uh, the production. And that's the most dangerous thing, actually, because uh, every plant is individually built and designed. And the pumps, the high-level pumps that create the pressure, uh, don't, you don't get them off the shelf. Uh, in my plant, it took 18 months to get a replacement. And we didn't want to go out when we didn't, you know, we didn't plan on it, and we had to run in one pump for like 18 months. Then, then we made, the water commissioners made a rule that let's buy another one and keep it on stock. So that's probably the most likely one if they're going after one, one plant. Um, if, you were, if you were going to... Uh, uh, if you had the capability to do a, SCADA, a, a cyber attack on it, and I'll be getting to that a little more later, uh, you could perhaps uh, change the dosing of the chemicals. And it's been alleged that uh, the, the, the most likely thing to do would be increase the chlorine, because too much chlorine in the water can be harmful to health. 
Uh, you could also reduce the chlorine and then, then shut off the sensors that monitor it going out, and that would cause bacteria.